Hi everyone, you might wonder why my YouTube channel is named your one-stop course, review course, or your one-stop channel. Because I designed contents in engineering courses where my audience and my viewers will definitely stick to my channel because of so many uh, sample problems that I create aside from the lecture videos that I designed for, so that all the viewers will be prepared especially those who are first timers in solving and viewing the principles involved in statics not only statics, but the underlying mathematical tools that are needed in order for you to be prepared in statics. So I named my channel as One Stop Channel. And actually, I already finished my fluid mechanics and hydraulics uh, playlist. It is also considered as a one-stop channel. So I have here for 10 levels, I, I label or categorize the problems, sample problems especially. If in a particular topic, there are 10 problems, so I'll mark them as levels 1 to 10. So levels 1 to 5 are basic problems, Level 6 to 8 are moderate, so that's 30%, 50%, and levels 9 to 10, 20% are challenging. This uh, percentage of the problems were patterned after the panel of examiners in the board exams where they said that 50% will be basic, 30% will be moderate, and 20% will be challenging. So for 15 levels, you have to read this, and for 20 levels, you might say that the 17 to 20 or 13 to 15 are not challenging for you. Well, it's good for you if you feel that those levels are not really challenging but statics in my experience of teaching statics my students cannot say that because some problems in statics are very tricky so before you proceed always watch the lecture videos for the principles before proceeding to the problems in my experience, most students attack directly the problems without proper mathematical tools or background and orientation of the principles involved. That's why when they solve problems, they get stuck because they it's like going to a war without a weapon. So you have to be prepared. If you have watched the lecture video for 100 times, then do it. And still your level is in the basic part. I mean to say you're still in the, you have a hard time understanding the problems in the basic part, then quit engineering. So it means, it sounds harsh, but I am just talking realistically. Why waste your time if you cannot progress? Engineering is a challenging course you need to have quick thinking so that in a situation you will not get rattled so engineers can think immediately uh, for whatever problems that may arise they should investigate the causes of the problems that's one trait that an engineer should have. So you might be successful in an engineering career. Inform me if you are indeed successful in another career. 
because I'm very happy. I'm glad that I have uh, convinced somebody not to pursue engineering. If that is the case, but if that's your dream, then do it. But you have to prepare yourselves. Okay? So I hope that you enjoy with my channel contents. So let's have our little review in trigonometry, although I already discussed this in statics, basics of statics, zero. So I need to review you very briefly because all the things that we're going to review here will be used in the analysis for the level 20 levels that I prepared, 20 level problems that I prepared. So we have a parallelogram here, which may represent two forces that are concurrent, let's say F1 and F2, and the angle included between them is denoted by alpha. So property of parallelogram, two sides, parallel sides are equal, opposite sides are equal, and opposite angles are equal also. So if we extend this side there, then this, the measure of this angle is also alpha, equal to that. These are transverse angles. Because this is parallel to F2, and this is just the extension of F1. So the angle between F1 and F2 is alpha. So this is still F1, and this is the free vector of F2. So this is also alpha. Therefore, because this forms a straight line, this is 180, the measure of this angle is 180 degrees minus alpha. So this is the resultant when the two forces are arranged in, or the two forces meet at their tails. So these are the free vectors of F1 and F2. So this is the resultant if the forces are arranged according to tip to tail. So for example, you, you draw F1 first, then connect the tail of F2, then the vector that is connected from the tail of the first to the tip of the second will be the resultant. And the ordering of the arrangement does not matter. So you may proceed with F2 first, then the tail of F1 is connected, so this is the tip of F1. So it is still the same resultant. So if this is 180 degrees minus alpha, then that's also 180 degrees minus alpha. Now, if I call that theta, this is also theta. If I call that beta, then this is also beta. Remember, these are the three vectors of F1 and F2 respectively. Then cosine law is opposite any in any triangle the square of the opposite the square of any side is equal to the sum of the squares of the other sides f1 square f2 square minus twice the product of the other sides cosine of the angle opposite to this side here to r so you're already in static so i think you have no question about this you should know this or else, if you still do not know this, you lost in this course. So that's the cosine law. There is no issue with respect to cosine law. It is an absolute law. Then, to solve for theta and beta, you have to apply sine law in this triangle. So parallelogram law. Then, if because we deal with half of the parallelogram, that's the triangle. Then we have the law of sines and law of cosines and law of sines applied to this triangle law. So R as to sine of 180 degrees minus alpha equals F1 as to sine of beta equals F2 as to sine of theta. So this is sine law. However, sine law has issue. What's the issue with sine law? Remember that sine of 180 degrees minus alpha is equal to sine of alpha itself. If you expand, 
expand sine 108, quantity 180 degrees minus alpha, that's sine 180, cosine alpha, minus sine 180, cosine alpha, minus cosine 180, sine alpha. So that's why it is sine alpha, because sine 180 is zero. However, when you apply law of sine, make sure that the angle that you are computing is acute. So for instance, you are not aware that the angle that you compute is an obtuse angle. Your calculator will always give you an acute value. For example, you're computing an angle and you are unaware that that angle is obtuse. If you, when you apply the law of sign, the calculator will always give you the acute angle. For example, when you apply sine law and using your calculator, you are unaware, and it gives you an angle of 30 degrees. Because you are not aware that the angle that you are computing is an obtuse angle, then your answer may be 30 degrees. It's not 30. It should be 150 degrees. Because sine, and sine of 30 and sine 150 degrees are equal to 0.5. So if the angle is 40 degrees and you're not aware that it is obtuse, then you report your answer as 40 degrees, then it is wrong. It should be 140 degrees. So unless otherwise you are aware, then feel free to use sine law. Always remember that. Now, what if the parallelogram reduces to a rectangle? Then it will be the easiest case because the angle is 90 degrees cosine of 180 degrees minus 90 is 0 cosine 90 is 0 so it, it reduces to Pythagora theorem that is hypotenuse square r square equals f1 square plus f2 square right so there's no problem when the parallelogram reduces to a rectangle finally if you have an angle an inclined plane with an angle of inclination of alpha, then the normal, normal means the line perpendicular to that inclined plane, and the vertical will also form an angle of alpha, angle of inclination. Why? Because this is a right triangle. So if this is alpha, the measure of this angle here is 90 degrees minus alpha. So if this is 90 degrees minus alpha, then that means this is alpha. So that alpha plus 90 degrees minus alpha or in this time, this should be alpha equal to this. So that 90 degrees minus alpha plus alpha is also 90 degrees. This one, this is a right triangle. It's perpendicular here because this is vertical. So that means the angle between, the angle of inclination is also the angle between the normal or the line that is perpendicular to the inclined plane and the vertical. So I hope that you can remember that. So let's have level one problem. Determine the resultant of the two perpendicular forces shown. So here it is. So the two forces are perpendicular. So the parallelogram reduces to a rectangle and that's why it's level one. So solving, let's draw the parallelogram by drawing lines parallel to the other uh, forces through the tip of one force. So all you have to do is draw from this tip parallel to this force from this tip also parallel to that then you can form this rectangle a parallelogram but reduces to a rectangle so this is r and the angle that r makes with the horizontal is denoted by theta because r is a vector therefore by Pythagoras theorem r is square root of 700 square plus 300 square this is 300 
So the magnitude of R is 761.6 newtons. If you report your answer as 761.6 newtons, it's lacking. It's wrong. Because remember, resultant is a force or resultant is a vector. And resultant of concurrent forces is also a force which is a vector that passes through the intersection of the two forces. So to solve for theta, we have this right triangle here, 90 degrees here. So tangent theta is 300 over 700, opposite over adjacent. So theta is 23.20 degrees. Always report your answers to four significant figures. The final answers must be to four significant figures like this. 23.2 is only three significant figures. So even if the last value in the decimal is zero, but that's part of the significant figure. So 761.6. You may report before this to two decimal places, but I want the final answer to be to four significant figures. So the final answer should be R equals 761.6 at then you have to indicate theta equals 23.2 with the with the symbol in this manner, like that. So it is inclined up to the right. Then that's R, and the angle is 23.2 degrees. Okay. So let's proceed to level two. Determine the resultant of the two perpendicular forces shown. So this is another right triangle, but still on level 2 problems so solution we draw again lines from the tip of the 240 newton load parallel to the 80 and from the tip of the 80 newton force parallel to the 240 to form this rectangle and that's the resultant and r makes an angle theta with the horizontal always with the horizontal so r is square root of 80 square plus 240 square by Pythagoras theorem or by cosine law if you want where the angle is 90 this one 90 here so r is 253.0 newtons so four significant figures then tangent of theta is 240 over 80 opposite of theta is 240 adjacent is 80 so theta is 71.57 degrees. Then your final answer should be R is 253 newtons at you have this direction. R is up to the left and theta is 71.57 degrees. So, so far so good. I hope that you can follow. If you like the video, if you like the contents of my channel, please like and don't forget to subscribe what is important is to share this with your friends and i hope that you will always enjoy watching my videos and you will learn a lot from my uh, discussion level three problem a horizontal shaft exerts a si sideways thrust of 2.4 kilonewtons and a downward load of 5.6 kilonewtons on a bearing. What is the resultant? So, to help analyze the situation, you have to prepare the figure. You just draw a sh shaft and this bearing here. So, it exerts a sideways thrust of 2.4 kilonewtons. It may be and a downward load on a bearing. So what is the resultant? So this side sway thrust may be leftward or rightward, but let's just make it rightward. So from the tips, again, draw lines parallel to the other forces, then this is the resultant. So the resultant makes an angle theta with the horizontal. So R, the magnitude, is square root of 2.4 square plus 5.6 square. This is also 5.6. So 
So R is 6.093 kilonewtons. And tangent of data is 5.6 over 2.4. So data can now be solved 66.80 degrees. So the final answer R is 6.093 kilonewtons. And you have to indicate R and theta as your final answer directed down to the right. Level 4 problem. Member C of the frame shown has two forces acting on it. Find the resultant force. So this is 70 degrees. So if you draw a line and the 3000 newton load force makes an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal down to the right. So if you draw a line, vertical line through their intersection, so take note that, that this is 20 degrees, 20 degrees, and because this is also 20 degrees inclination, so that means this is 70 degrees. If this is 70 degrees and this is a vertical line, so it will be perpendicular to the horizontal line. So that means this is 90 minus 70, so 20 degrees also. This is 70. So meaning to say the 3000 newton load and the 500 newton load are perpendicular to each other. So the resultant would be this from the tails of the from the tip of each force and this is now the rectangle that's the resultant let's make this call this angle alpha since 3000 newton load and 500 newton loads are perpendicular to each other the magnitude of r would be square root of 3000 square plus 500 square then r is equal to 3041 newtons to four significant figures we need to solve for alpha because the angle that that R makes with the horizontal is theta. And theta from the figure is 20 degrees plus alpha. And alpha is R tan of this side, which is 500 over adjacent, which is 3000. So tangent of alpha equals 500 over 3000. So alpha is equal to 9.462 degrees. So what is theta of R? Theta of R is 20 plus 9.462 degrees. So that would be 29.46 degrees and it is directed down to the right, 29.46. So there's no need to show that this angle is 29.46 because it is obvious in the figure 20 plus alpha, 20 plus 9.46 to 29.46 degrees to four significant figures. That's it. Level 5. Each drive wheel of a car accelerating up a 10 degree slope has the forces shown below acting on it. Determine the resultant. So here is the given figure and the 1.2 kilonewton load and the 3.2 kilonewton loads are perpendicular to each other. So for the solution, let's do the rectangle first or then the resultant, which is up to the right. And the angle that the resultant makes with this inclined plane is alpha. This is 90 degrees here. So take note that the angle of inclination, this is parallel to that inclination, is 10 degrees. So that the total angle that R makes with the horizontal would be 10 plus alpha. So the magnitude of R is square root of 1.2 square plus 3.2 square. So R is equal to 3.418 kilonewtons. Then to solve for this angle alpha, tangent of alpha is 3.2 over, this is 1.2. So 3.2 over 1.2, so alpha can now be solved. It is 69.44 degrees. Then after that, take 
report the final answer as R equals 3.418 kilonewtons at theta equals 10 degrees plus alpha. So theta is 79.44 degrees, 10 degrees plus 69.44. So here is the final answer, 3.418 kilonewtons directed up to the right with theta 579.44 degrees. Level 6, determine the resultant of the forces shown below. So this is still part of the basic problem. So this is the given figure. Let's draw parallelograms here, a parallelogram rather. So from the tips, draw lines parallel to the other force and vice versa. So this is the resultant. Now the angle here is 180 minus 82 minus 40 because that's a straight line. So that's 58 degrees. There's no need to show that because we have limited space. And I also mentioned how to solve this. 180 degrees minus 82 degrees minus 40 degrees is 58 degrees. Then draw the resultant. And let's call this angle alpha here with the 180 Newton force and R. Then remember that if one interior angle of a parallelogram is 58, the other the adjacent angle, this one or this one, is 180 degrees minus 58. 180 degrees minus 58 is 122 degrees. There's no need also to present that here because I mentioned how to find that. So in this triangle, we apply cosine law. Take note that this is 375 and this side is 180. So R square equals square r square equals 180 square plus 2 375 square minus 2 times 180 375 cosine of 122 degrees so from here we can compute using your calculator the magnitude of r 494.5 newtons having found r we apply sine law to solve for alpha so sine law uh, r which is 494.5 as to sine of 122, sine of opposite angle, equals 375. This is 375 as to sine of alpha. So alpha is arc sine of 375 sine 122 over 494.5. So alpha is equal to 40.02 degrees. Therefore, uh, theta that R because R is directed down to the left, so theta is 40 degrees plus alpha. So 40 degrees plus alpha is 80.02 degrees. So R is directed down to the left through an angle with a horizontal of 40 degrees plus alpha. Plus 40. 40 plus 40.02 is 80.02 degrees. So there's no need also to show theta here, but in your solution, in a quiz maybe or exam, you have to show that. Level 7, determine the resultant of the forces shown below. So here is the given figure for the solution. Let's have the parallelogram. So again, technique from the tip, draw lines parallel to the other force and vice versa. So the un included angle of the two forces is 50 degrees. So that's the resultant. And let's call this alpha so that R makes an angle of 10 degrees plus alpha with the horizontal, always with the horizontal. So since this is 50 degrees, the adjacent angle, included angle of the parallelogram, either this or this one, is 180 minus 50, so 130 degrees. So considering this triangle, take note this is 600 and this is 450. So we can compute the magnitude of R by cosine law. R square equals uh, 450 square plus 600 square minus 2 times 450, 600 cosine of 130. So using your calculator there, we can now compute R. R is equal to 953.7 newtons. Then 
by sine law alpha is acute in the figure so there's no problem because alpha is acute because this is 50 degrees and alpha is smaller than 50 degrees so r 953.7 as to sine 130 is equal to 600 this is 600 as to sine alpha so computing for alpha alpha is 28.81 degrees so our final answer r is 953.7 newtons at theta of r is 10 plus alpha so 38.81 and it is directed up to the right that's it level eight a man of weight 800 newtons holds one end of a rope that passes over a pulley vertically above his head and to the other end of which is attached a weight of 600 newtons so find the force with which the man's feet press uh, pressed against the floor so let's draw the figure to help analyze the situation so we have a man weighing 800 newtons and he holds one end of a rope that passes over a pulley of course frictionless pulley so this is 600 newtons so if this is 600 then the tension here is also 600 then this is tension upward which is also 600 newtons so that's the FBD so considering the free body diagram of this portion here with the reaction on his feet F so then that F is opposite when his feet is pressing against the floor also by F same magnitude so from the figure F plus 600 equals 800 summation forces vertical so F plus 600 equals 800 so F therefore is 200 newtons that's the force that the feet of the man is pressed against the floor level 9 problem a boat is moved uniformly along a canal by two carabaos pulling with forces p 1000 newtons and q 1200 newtons acting under an angle alpha of 60 degrees determine the magnitude of the resultant pull on the boat and the angles beta and gamma as shown in the figure so this is the boat pulled by carabaos exerting forces of p 1000 and q 1200 newtons under an angle of alpha this included angle here of 60 degrees so solution let's do the parallel gram so these are the informations so this is the resultant after we draw lines parallel to the tips of the other and this is the resultant force from the tails to their tips since this is lambda equal to this this is beta so this is also beta from the principle of parallelogram this is also lambda if you want so the measure of this angle is 180 degrees minus one included angle of 60 degrees so this is 120 degrees and considering this lower triangle by cosine law r square equals 1200 square plus 1000 square or 1000 square plus 1200 square minus 2 times 1000 1200 cosine of 120 degrees so from here we can compute the magnitude of r 1908 newtons since it is only the magnitude of the resultant not the resultant itself and the angles beta and gamma lambda by gamma rather by sine law R 1908 as to sine 120 equals 1200 as to sine beta equals 1000 as to sine gamma. So beta is from this equation inverse sine of one quantity 1200 over sine 120 over 1908. So beta is 33 degrees. While lambda, while gamma is inverse sine of 1000 sine 120 over 1908 so gamma is 27 degrees so check 33 plus 27 should be equal to 60 degrees 
level 10 problem this is supposedly the last of the basic problem so i hope that so far you are able to follow the solutions to levels 1 to 10 with confidence without uh, doubt what force f combined with a vertical pull of 30 newtons will give a horizontal resultant of r 40 newtons so let's draw the figure. We have a pool, so it is downward, 30 newtons. And make sure that the resultant is horizontal of 40 newtons. So this should be the 30 newton force, and this should be the F, so that if we draw lines parallel to their tips, then the possibility is R is horizontal with magnitude of 40 newtons. So, since this is also 30 newtons, because this is parallel to that, so we can now compute the magnitude of F square root of 40 square plus 30 square. So, F is 50 newtons, and from the figure tangent alpha, it should be inclined up to the right. Tangent of alpha is 30 over 40 so alpha is 36.87 degrees so the final answer f is 50 newtons and it is inclined up to the right through this angle 36.87 degrees level 11 one method of clearing bush from land is to use a large steel ball with chains attached to pulled attached pulled by two caterpillar tractors the chain tensions are ab 20 kilonewtons and cd 15 kilonewtons find the resultant force on the steel ball so you have here the chains and these are the caterpillar tractors then the tangents to the chains at b and c are 45 and 30 degrees so the tension in AB is 20 kilonewtons and this here is 15 kilonewtons. So th let's draw the parallelogram. So 20 kilonewtons, 15 kilonewtons. So the measure of the angle here between the two tensions is 180 minus 45 minus 30. So that's 105 degrees. So let's draw from their tips the lines parallel to the other forces. So this is the resultant. It seems up directed up to the left. But let's verify. And let's call this angle alpha. So again, this the measure of this angle is 105, 180 minus 45 minus 30. So therefore, either this angle here or this angle here is 180 minus 105, so 75 degrees. So let's consider this triangle. The sides are 20, this is 15, and this is R. So R can now be computed R by cosine law. R square equals uh, 20 square plus 15 square minus 2 times 20, 15 cosine of 75. So R is 21.67 kilonewtons, and by sine law, uh, R is 21.67 as to sine 75 equals 15 as to sine alpha. So alpha is 41.96 degrees. Therefore, R is 21.67 degrees directed up to the left at an angle of 45 plus 41.96 45 plus 41.96 is 86.96 only so it means it's correct that it is r is directed up to the left so r is 21.67 at theta equals 86.96 directed up to the left level 12 the ship is pulled by two tugboats shown Determine the magnitude of the tension exerted by the second tugboat if the tension in the first boat is shown in the figure and the resultant must be vertical, vertically upward with magnitude of 25.44 kilonewtons. The distances must be maintained. 
So these distances in the figure must be maintained and this boat will, the ship will move vertically upward with this magnitude of resultant. So the parallelogram, so that's 25.44 from their tips. So this angle, the measure of this angle is inverse tangent of 10 over 16. Tangent of this angle is 10 over 16. So this angle is 32.01 degrees. There's no need to present it here because I mentioned how to solve this. Then tangent of this angle here is 15 over 12. 15 over 12. That's 12. So this angle is 51.34 degrees. Then the parallelogram, that one. So the total angle is 32.01 degrees plus 51.34 degrees. That's 83.35 degrees. Therefore, either this angle is 180 minus the sum of these two angles or this angle here. So let's consider this angle. This 96.65 is 180 minus 32.01 minus 51.34. So 96.65 degrees. So considering this triangle here, uh, given the magnitude, then we can compute for T. This is T, this is 20. So by, by sine law or by cosine law. So 25.44 square equals 20 square plus t square minus 2 times 20 times t cosine of 96.65 degrees. So simplifying t square plus 4.632 t minus 247.2 equals 0. Then using your calculator quadratic formula, t is 13.58 uh, kilonewtons. So the question is just the magnitude of the tension T exerted by the second tugboat. So there's no need to specify the direction because it is also shown in the figure. So that's it for this problem. You can solve for T by actually sine law. So you can also have T as to sine of 32.01 degrees equals 25.44 as to sine of 96.65. So 25.44 times sine of 96.60, sine of 32.01. And divided by sine of 96.65. The easier solution is by sine law. Again, another way to solve for t instead of this quadratic equation is t, do that, do that now, t as to sine 32.01 equals 25.44 as to sine 96.65. So that's the better solution. Level 13. It is desired to remove the spike from timber by applying force along its horizontal axis. An obstruction A prevents direct access so that two forces, one 2,000 newtons and the other P, are applied by cables as shown. Compute the magnitude of P necessary to ensure a resultant R directed along the spike. Also find the magnitude of R. So if it is bold phase vector, if it is uh, not bold phase meaning magnitude only. So this is the given figure. So for the solution, we need this these two angles here. Tangent of alpha, tangent of this angle is 100 over 200. So this angle therefore is equal to 26.57 degrees. While this angle here is tangent of, this angle is 150 over 200. So inverse tangent of 150 over 200 is 36.87 degrees. There's no need to present it, the solution here. 
to save space and of course it's it is mentioned now to solve that so you should be able to follow so the resultant is along the spike so it is horizontal these are the calculated angles then we can now have because r is directed horizontally we can have a law of signs here so the measure of this angle is 180 degrees minus the sum of these two 180 minus 26.57 minus 36.57 is 116.56 degrees so this is also 26.57 degrees and that's also 36.87 so in this lower triangle by sine law 2000 as to sine of 26.57 degrees equals P, this is P as to sine 36.87 equals R as to sine 116.56. So P therefore is 2000 sine 36.87 over sine 26.57. So P is 2683 newtons, while R is 2000 sine 116.56 degrees divided by sine 26.57 degrees. So R is 3999 newtons. Level 14, at what angle theta must the 4 kN force be applied in order that the resultant R of the two forces have magnitude of 10 kN? For this condition, determine the angle beta between R and the vertical. So take note that so far our solution is based only on cosine law, sine law, and the triangle. Then for the next batch of problems on my next slide, on my next video, we'll have to compute components so, and vectors approach so that you will have plenty of methods on how to find the resultant of four systems. So here is the figure we're looking for theta and the angle that angle beta between R and the vertical. So at what angle theta must the 4 kN load force be applied in order that the resultant R of the two forces have a magnitude of 10 kN. So let's do the parallelogram again. So this is 7, this is 4. The measure of the angle here is theta and the magnitude is of R is 10 kN. So this is 180 degrees minus, this is beta that R makes with the vertical. And this is 180 degrees minus theta. So in this right part of the triangle by cosine law 10 square equals 4 square plus 7 square minus 2 times 4 times 7 cosine of 180 degrees minus theta. So using your calculator there we can solve 180 degrees minus theta equals 128.7 degrees. Therefore, theta is 180 minus 127.8. So theta is 51.30 degrees. So that's the measure of angle theta. Then by sine law, because this is also beta, 10 as to sine 180 degrees minus theta is 128.7 degrees equals 4 this one is 4, this is also 180 degrees, this is also 4 as to sine of beta. This is also beta. So beta is 18.19 degrees. That's it. Level 15, the anchor point for several cables as forces acting as shown. Determine the resultant by the parallelogram law by determining the resultant of any two forces and add geometrically to the third force. So here is the given figure. There are three forces now, but we can still use parallelogram law here. So as of the moment, let's just use this approach. So 350 and 750 are arranged according to tip to tail manner. So therefore, this is the resultant automatic. So let's have, let's 
leave 1000 first let's determine the resultant of the 350 newton force and the 750 newton force it is represented by this uh, vector r1 let's call that r1 we will call this angle alpha so the magnitude of r1 by cosine law is and let's call that beta also so r1 square equals 350 square plus 750 square minus 2 times 350 times 750 cosine of 95 so r sub 1 is equal to 854.8 newtons having found r sub 1 then let's solve for alpha and beta by uh, cosine law uh, by sine law so r1 854.8 as to sine 95 equals 750 as to sine of alpha. So alpha is equal to 60.93 degrees. Then beta is 180 minus 95 minus alpha. 180 degrees minus alpha, which is 60.93 degrees minus beta, uh, minus 95. So beta is equal to 24.07 degrees. Now, if you imagine a horizontal line through the tail of 350 newton force, so this is also 25. 350 makes an angle of 25 with the horizontal. Therefore, R1 makes an angle with the horizontal of alpha minus 25. So we draw a line through the tip of R1, and the measure of this angle is again alpha minus 25. So draw a line from the tip of 350 from that horizontal line to the 350 newton force that's also 25. Since the total angle is alpha, then the angle that R1 makes with horizontal is alpha minus 25. Not shown here. So 60.93 degrees minus 25 is 35.93. Since 35.93 plus beta is the angle that the 750 newton force makes with the horizontal. This is the horizontal, this is the 750 newton force, so the measure of this angle is 35.93 plus 24.07. I will not compute that anymore, I will not present it here. You just use your calculator there. Again, 35.93 plus beta is this angle. 35.93 plus 24.07 is 60 degrees. Since the total angle here is 130, so meaning to say this is 130 minus 60, 70 degrees. So let's now consider R1 and 1000. So this is R1 with magnitude of 854.8 newtons and it makes an angle with a horizontal of 35.93 the 1000 newton force makes an angle with a horizontal of 70 degrees so therefore this angle here is 180 minus 70 minus 35.93 that's the resultant and the measure of this angle again is 180 minus this angle here which is 70 and 35.93 so 180 minus 70 110 110 minus 35.93 is 74.07 degrees so we can now solve the magnitude of r r square equals and let's call that alpha so that the uh, that the resultant makes an angle of theta with horizontal and theta is alpha minus This is not the alpha that is uh, presented here. This is another angle, supposedly. So I'll just call this lambda. So this is lambda. So therefore, theta is lambda minus 35.93 degrees. So by cosine law, r square equals 854.8 square plus 1000 square minus 2 times 854.8 times 1000 cosine of 74.07 so r is 1123 newtons then by sine law 1123 as to sine of lambda or r 1123 as to sine of 74.07 degrees 
equals 1000 as to sine of lambda. So lambda is equal to 58.90 degrees. Not lambda, gamma, sorry, gamma. So this is gamma. I mentioned it wrongly, that term it should be gamma. So 58.9 degrees. Therefore, theta is 58.9 minus 35.93. And theta is equal to 22.97 degrees. So the final answer, R is 1123. And it is inclined up to the right through an angle of 22.97 degrees. Level 16, determine the resultant of the forces of the force system shown by parallelogram and triangle law. So there are four forces, so the solution will be a bit lengthy, but this is still level 16. So let's solve for the resultant of this 20 and 40 kilonewton load. Let's do parallelogram. Then the resultant of 30 and 52 also combined. And this is the resultant because this is tip to tail approach. This one, tail and tail, so we do a parallelogram. So here is the figure. So let's solve for this, the measure of this angle, arctan of 5 over 12, inverse tangent of 5 over 12, that's 22.62 degrees, while this angle is inverse tangent of 4, 4 vertical, 3 horizontal, so 4, Inverse tangent of 4 over 3, 53.13 degrees. Not shown anymore. So this is the parallelogram for these two. This is the resultant. And call that R1. And the measure of this angle, call that alpha. Because the angle between them is 80, then this angle here is 180 minus 80, so 100 degrees. From there, we can now compute the magnitude of R1 by cosine law then on the other side this is 53.13 degrees take note and this is the resultant let's call this angle beta and let's call that r2 so r1 square equals 20 square plus 40 square minus 2 times 20 times 40 cosine of 100 degrees in this triangle so the magnitude of R1 is 47.73 kilonewtons. Then by sign law to solve for alpha, 47.73 as to sign of 100. Now let's solve for this angle first. This is 22.62 degrees plus 53.13 degrees. So 75.75 degrees. So if that is 75.75 degrees, then we can solve the magnitude of R2 later by cosine law also. So by sine law, <coughs> R1 47.73 as to sine 100 equals 40. This is 40 as to sine of alpha. So alpha is 55.62 degrees. So R1 makes an angle of 55.62 degrees with the horizontal and it is directed down to the left. For R2, by cosine law, R2 square equals 52 square plus 30 square minus 2 times 52 times 30 cosine of 75.75. So the magnitude of R2 is 53.25 kilonewtons. So having found R2, then we apply sine law to solve for beta 53.25 as to sine of 75.75 equals 52 as to sine of beta so beta is inverse sine of quantity 52 sine 75.75 over 53.25 so beta is 71.17 degrees so if beta is 71.17 degrees this angle is this is 53.13, same as that from the horizontal. 
this is beta and therefore the measure of this angle is 180 degrees use your calculator there 180 degrees minus 53.13 minus beta which is 71.17 degrees so the measure of this angle is 55.7 degrees with horizontal r2 makes an angle of 55.7 degrees with horizontal r1 makes an angle of 55.62 degrees with horizontal so they are almost closed but not equal if they are equal then it's easy to compute for the resultant but they are not equal so we'll find it very difficult because r1 and r2 forms almost a straight line <laughs> so remember that r2 with a magnitude of 53.25 kilonewtons makes an angle of 55.7 degrees with horizontal while r1 which is down to the left makes an angle of 55.62 with horizontal they are almost equal so this angle here the measure of this angle here is 180 minus 55.7 that's why you have there 124.3 degrees so the angle between 47.73 and 53.25 is almost 180 or straight line <clears throat> but definitely this is less than 180 124.3 plus 55.62 since if we draw parallelogram the parallelogram is very narrow let's just emphasize a parallelogram so that it's easy for us to analyze so let's make this the parallelogram this is 53.25 this is 47.73 exaggerated and the angle between the two is 124.3 degrees plus 55.62 is 179.92 degrees so considering this right part of the triangle so this the measure of this angle is 180 minus 179.92 so that's i'll call this lambda and this angle is 0 0.08 degrees so by cosine law we can now compute the magnitude of r with opposite angle 0 0.08 this is 47.73 so by cosine law in this triangle r square equals 47.73 square plus 53.25 square minus 2 times 47.73 53.25 cosine of 0 0.08 degrees so we can now compute the magnitude of r 5.52 kilonewtons then by sine law 5.52 as a sine of 0 0.08 degree equals 47.73 as the sign of lambda so lambda is 0.6918 degrees so if lambda is 0.6918 degrees the resultant makes an angle of theta with the horizontal and theta is equal to this angle here which is 55.7 55.7 degrees plus lambda so theta is 55.7 degrees plus lambda 0.6918 degree so theta is this is theta from horizontal to r 56.39 degrees therefore our answer r is 5.52 at theta directed up to the right 56.39 degrees and that's it Level 17, the system shown have the smallest magnitude of the resultant. Determine the magnitude of the smallest resultant if the body must move at the uniform rate. So for the magnitude of the resultant force to be minimum, take note that the resultant of the 350 Newton force and the 400 Newton force is somewhat directed in this direction also so for the resultant to be minimum the analysis would be it should be aligned with the 200 newton force because there is there is always there is already 200 newton force here if it's if it is not aligned then if it's oblique with the 200 then the resultant will not be that minimum it should be in the same direction of 200 
So that's the analysis. And the magnitude of the resultant is equal to the resultant of the 350 and the 400 newton force plus this 200 newton force. So that's the idea. So if this is the free body diagram, the resultant of the 400 and the 350 newton force, which is denoted by R1, must be aligned and in the same direction as the 200 newton force so that the magnitude of the resultant is minimum. So the minimum magnitude of the resultant is equal to R1 plus this 200 here. And let's solve for R1 first by drawing this parallelogram. The angle is, because this is vertical and the horizontal 90 plus 40, so 130 degrees. So that's the parallelogram and that's the resultant, R1. And this angle is uh, 50 degrees because that's the angle between the vertical and vertical and 400. So if I draw a vertical line here, this is 90 minus 40, so 50 degrees. So, or, because this is 130, 180 minus 130 is 50 degrees. So, the magnitude of R1 can now be solved by cosine law. R1 square equals 350 square plus 400 square minus 2 times 350, 400 cosine of 50 degrees. So, R sub 1 magnitude is 320.2 newtons. Therefore, the magnitude of the smallest resultant is 320.2 plus 200. So R minimum is 520.2 newtons. Level 18, a trolley. A trolley that moves along a horizontal beam is acted upon by two forces as shown. So determine P so that the resultant is a vertical force of 2,500 newtons. So here is the given figure. Let's have the solution. So 1,600, this is P. Then the resultant is vertical with a magnitude of 2,500. That's it. And let's call this alpha because that's the angle that P makes with the vertical alpha. So this is P. Therefore, because that's 15 degrees with the horizontal, then with the vertical, 1,600 makes an angle of 90 minus 15. So this is 75 degrees. Therefore, the included angle between 1,600 and P is 75 plus alpha. The measure of this angle, therefore, is 180 minus 75 minus alpha. So this is 105 degrees minus alpha. Then by sine law, because this is also alpha, equal to that. So 1,600 as to sine alpha equals 2,500 as to sine quantity 105 degrees minus alpha equals P as to sine 75. So considering these two sides of the equation, al alpha is the only unknown, you may solve this by trial and error if you're not allowed to use your high-tech calculator. So by trial and error, we can solve for alpha. Alpha is equal to 36.54, considering this equation here. Then P is 1,600 sine 75 divided by sine 36.54 degrees. So P is 2596 newtons. So what is the angle that P makes with the horizontal? It is directed down to the right. It is 90 minus alpha. So theta sub B is 90 degrees minus alpha, 36.54. Take note. The P, theta P is the angle that P makes with the horizontal. So this angle here. 
and it is 90 horizontal vertical so 90 minus alpha so theta p is 53.46 degrees therefore our answer is p is 25.96 directed down to the right at 53.46 degrees level 19 Knowing that alpha is 40 degrees, determine the resultant of the three forces shown by parallelogram and triangle law only. So here is the given figure. Alpha is 40 degrees. So this is 90 minus 40, so this is 50 degrees. Let's find first the resultant between 400 and 300 newtons and later let's combine it with the 600 newton force. So resultant of the 400 and 300 newton, they meet at the tail, so we draw a parallelogram. And that's the resultant. Let's call this angle beta, and the resultant of the two is R1. Alpha is 40 degrees, therefore the measure of this adjacent angle here is 180 minus 40, 140 degrees. So let's consider the upper triangle. By cosine law, we can now compute the magnitude of R1. R1 square equals 400 square plus this is 300 square minus 2 times. So 300 square plus 400 square minus 2 times 300, 400 cosine of 140 degrees. So R sub 1 is equal to 658.7 newtons. Then Knowing R1, let's solve for beta, this angle here by sine law, uh, 300 or R1, 658.7 sine 140 equals 300 as to sine beta. So beta is equal to 17.02 degrees. So if beta is 17.02 degrees, and this is 50 degrees, 90 minus alpha, 40. So 17.02 plus 50 plus 40. So 40 plus 50, 90. So this is 90 degrees. This between 600 and 490 degrees plus beta, 17.02 degrees. So the total angle is 107. So that's the resultant. This is 107.02 degrees. Why? Uh, alpha is 40, this is 50, so 90 degrees here, plus beta, 17.02, so 107.02 degrees. So in this triangle, we can now compute the magnitude of R because this is tip to tail arrangement. So that's why this is automatic R. So by Cosine low R square equals 600 square plus R1 square 658.7 square minus 2 times 600 658.7 cosine of 107.02 degrees. So the magnitude of R is 1013 newtons. Now, what is the angle that R makes with the horizontal? It is inclined up to the right. So if I draw a line parallel to the inclined here, this angle, this measure of the angle with the incline is 50 degrees. Why 50? 90 minus alpha, 90 minus 40, so 50 degrees. If I draw a horizontal line, since this is 20 degrees, 50 minus 20, so the angle that the 600 Newton force makes with the horizontal is 50 minus 20. This is also 20, so 30 degrees. So therefore, if I draw a horizontal line here, the 600 Newton force and the horizontal makes an angle of 30 degrees. And since this is the resultant, that's called theta. So again, 30 degrees is draw, draw a line parallel to the inclined. And the measure of the angle from this inclined plane to the 600 Newton force is 50. 50 is 90 because this is this line and this inclined plane are perpendicular so 90 minus alpha 40 so 50 then minus 20 
So, 30 degrees with horizontal, so that's 30. So, by sine law, 6, 5, 8, 7, R1 as so sine of theta plus 30 equals R1013 as so sine of 107.02. So, we can now solve for theta. 8.44 degrees. So, therefore, our final answer, R is 1013 newtons directed up to the right through an angle of 8.445 degrees. Level 20. For the block shown, determine the required value of alpha if the resultant of the three forces shown is to be parallel to the inclined and let there be the corresponding magnitude of the resultant. So you might ask or wonder why is this why this is level 20 the solution is short but remember that the available method is by parallelogram law not by any other method by any other method this is a simple problem but if you have only parallelogram law and triangle law then the analysis would be tricky so remember that the resultant is parallel to the incline. So here we go. So the resultant is parallel to the incline and definitely it is right to up to the right. Now, this resultant is equal to 300 plus the resultant of 600 and 400. Since this now these are arranged in tip to tail manner, then this represents the resultant R1. So the resultant, the magnitude of R is 300 plus R1. Why? R1 must also be parallel to the incline or else the resultant will not be parallel to the incline as stated here. And take note that the angle between 600 and 400 forces are, the angle is 90 degrees here because this is 90 minus alpha. 90 degrees minus alpha plus alpha is 90 degrees. So that's why this is 90 degrees. Having found that that is 90 degrees, it's easy for us to solve for R1. It is just square root of 600 square plus 400 square. So R1 is square root of 600 square plus 400 square. So R1 is 721.1. You might say it's very easy. It should not be level 20 but I tell you if you if it is your first encounter I don't think many of you can think that that should be the analysis so therefore we can now compute the magnitude of R it is 300 plus R1 or R1 plus 300 so R is 1021 newtons parallel to the incline now how about alpha so let's isolate this so that we can analyze it well. Remember, this is 90 degrees. And if we draw the line perpendicular to R1, this line here is perpendicular to the incline. And since R1 is parallel to the incline, then it is also perpendicular to R1. That's 90 degrees there. So if this is alpha, this is 90 degrees minus alpha because this is also a right triangle. So this is also alpha here. That's why tangent of alpha is simply 600 opposite over 400. So tangent of alpha is opposite 600 from this right triangle here over 400. So alpha is 56.31 degrees. So that's all for this video. I hope that you were able to follow all the problems from levels 1 to 20. For those who were not able to follow all the problems, it means that uh, you're still progressing. I hope that you were able to follow all. If not, you have to review the things that made you stuck up and hardly able to follow. It may be the mathematics or you have to review back and listen to the explanations. You have to pause the video if it is 
fast for you. you remember you can always post the video so if you find the video useful in your studies please don't forget to subscribe for those who have not yet subscribed press notification bell so that you will be updated of my future videos and don't forget to share this with your friends and i hope that all the problems all my lecture videos will be helpful in your studies and in your career Bye-bye.